the Imola Grand Prix. It was very, very close at the end. And even though Max Verstappen did win, again, that didn't tell the whole story. So to tell the whole story, let's go back to the beginning and qualify. Max was struggling all weekend. FP1, 2, 3. By his own admission, he was struggling with the balance of the car. He was especially struggling through turns 9 to 11, down into Aquamina Rally as well. He was going off into the gravel. He was just struggling in that part of the track, especially. Come qualifying, though, Max pulls a lap out, as he always does, and it's kind of what we expect from him. As it turns out, though, he might have got a little bit of assistance from a toe from Nico Hulkerberg down the straight, which some people claim gave him a tenth, tenth and a half, which was enough for him to get pole position. I'm not sure if I completely buy that scenario, but ultimately, Max starting on the front row I believe is what won him the race because ultimately it's such a hard track to pass on. And then he had a really good first in. So Max controlled the race. He started really, really well. Max doesn't actually have a bad start very often. He led into turn one and then he controlled the pace. By the time they pitted, Max had built up sort of a five, six second lead. And at that point, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was over. I thought, wow, all this promise of the Ferrari pace, the McLaren pace, where's it all gone? As it turns out, the Red Bulls just got the race pace needed and it's all over. But it turns out it was the hard tyres and the second stint that were the problem. Max started off the second stint just like he started off the first, pretty much ahead of Lando by five or six seconds, I think it was at that time. And I'm just expecting, really, the result not to change very much. As it turns out, Imola's the second hardest track to overtake on in the calendar next to Monaco, which we're going to next weekend. But it was really in the last sort of 15 laps where Lando was the quickest car on track, seven tenths at a time, quicker than anyone else. Now, I thought, well, Max is just managing his pace. Turns out he wasn't. He was struggling. He was talking over the radio. He was struggling with the tyres. And Lando closed the gap. He had a few scruffy laps, I think, though, Lando, which ultimately may have cost him. He got within DRS of Max on the very final lap. As Lando says, though, the damage for him was done early on in the race by letting Max get ahead for five, six, I think it was almost seven seconds by the time that they stopped. That was really where the damage was done for them. Now, I will say this, just getting into the DRS of Max, let's say he had another five laps, does not mean he was going to get past. We know Max is a wily fox. But yes, Max won. But we now have to look at the future and why this is really, really important. Right, so Lando won in Miami. No one saw that coming. Yes, he was helped by the safety car. No one can doubt that. But they had really good race pace as well. Then we've come to Imola, very different track. And we're all thinking, well, Ferrari are bringing upgrades. McLaren have already brought theirs. Red Bull brought upgrades as well. Where is this going to sort of even out? Then at the start of the race, I'm thinking, well, okay, it's obvious where this is evening out. But as it turns out, these cars are so evenly matched that on different tyre compounds, different temperatures, different track conditions, it can really ebb and flow. And we saw that towards the end of the race that the McLaren was the fastest race car on those hard tyres at that point. I think this is brilliant for the future because what this tells us is there's a very good chance that at different circuits, street circuits, uh, warm tracks, colder temperatures, we could see a real ebb and flow between Ferrari, perhaps, McLaren and Red Bull. I don't think we're going to get a situation where Max is going to win 22 races this season. I think there's a very good chance now that other people will steal away some victories for want of a better term. I will say this, though, as well. There's a few things we need to talk about during the race that happened. Let's quickly talk about Oscar Piastri. I felt really bad for Oscar because his race was actually ruined in qualifying, which is ironic because he put it in P2. Sadly for him, in the process of qualifying, he also blocked Kevin Magnussen and he received a three-place grid penalty. This put him in fifth at the start of the race behind both Ferraris. And as we saw during the race, he struggled to get past Carlos Sainz. Even though he was quite clearly the quicker car, he just didn't have the legs down the straight to get past Carlos. He did eventually um, get past him via the pit stops and undercut, but then he was just sandwiched between the two Ferraris. His race was kind of ruined by that, I think, because at one point his pace was fantastic. 
ultimately he just didn't have the pace to get past Sainz and overtaking around there is very hard. Speaking of overtaking, the only real overtaking we saw was when there was a big tyre deficit. And to be fair, <laughs> most of the overtakes were on Sergio Perez. There is a couple of other points. Fernando Alonso, he really struggled um, all weekend, actually. Obviously, he went off in FP3 uh, and, and, well, wrecked the car a little bit, didn't he? And then qualifying was a real struggle for him and he got knocked out. Then they started from the pit lane. I get the feeling they used this as a bit of a testing day for Fernando because he stopped, I think, four times in the end. It was just a weird weekend where Fernando looked a little bit out of sorts. And it's an important thing to talk about because Aston Martin brought quite a substantial upgrade of similar size to what Ferrari brought, but I'm not sure it really worked for them in the way they were hoping. In fact, they didn't really progress forward and they seemed to struggle. Maybe they just need some time to get on top of that. Last thing I want to talk about is the Mercedes uh, strategy, I guess you could call it. So Lewis started behind George. Lewis had a good start and they were running in 6th and 7th early on and they kind of stayed in that position, status quo. And George pitted a lot earlier than Lewis. After George had pitted, uh, Lewis was doing some pretty decent laps. He went off at Aqua Minerale into the gravel, lost about 5 or 6 seconds, which was, which was huge really. When he pitted, he came out, I think it was 9.5 seconds behind George Russell, something like that, 9.2, 9.3. As we were about 15 laps from the end, Lewis was catching George at like seven tenths a lap. Um, he was catching him, catching him, catching him. The gap was reducing. And Mercedes asked George if he wanted to pit. And George was game for it, but he was asking, well, hold on, if I pit, I'm going to be hand Lewis. Is Lewis going to give me the position back if I pit? His engineer is saying, well, no, that's not going to happen. She was like, well, I don't want to give the position up, which is fair. But they're telling him, well, based on what you're telling us with the tyre wear and based on our information, we're not sure you're going to get to the end of the race. Now, he did stop about six or seven laps before Lewis, but it seems like George was working his tyres a lot harder. And so they felt he might not make it to the end of the race. So they pitted him. He ended up coming out 23, 24 seconds behind Lewis. And uh, he was never going to make that up in the, the the 20 odd laps well it wasn't even 20 laps at that point it was it was a lot less so he ended up finishing 12 seconds behind Lewis which I don't think he was very happy about and I understand that but supposedly it was due to his tire wear and uh you know if he'd have managed his tires a little bit better he probably wouldn't have been in that situation so Imola it's not a good track for overtaking it's not a good track for racing we need to make the cars a little bit more nimble and lighter and then I think Imola would improve in that aspect. But as it stands at the minute, it's not great. But don't worry. Don't worry. The next circuit is a track known for overtaking, known for high-risk overtakes and wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. It's, it's Monaco. It's, Mon it's Monaco. That's what's next. Monaco. Yeah, see you then.